Hey guys, welcome back to Juno New Origins. We're in the one small jump because we just did perform one small jump. In fact, we actually got up to a, a pretty serious speed last time. 15 kilometers an hour jumped off the side of a, of a, of a cliff. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. Uh, indeed, it was this mission right here, this type of mission right here where we were grounded, had to hit a certain speed and jump. But we've got two, two missions today. Two missions today that we are really, really intrigued on trying to make happen. Uh, one of them is to just get into orbit. Shouldn't be that difficult. We can go sideways. I don't know about getting back into the atmosphere afterwards that might be a bit difficult but you know they only want us to get up with a periapsis of more than 80 kilometers that's beautiful but there is another mission as well that we're going to take off you have already tried to jump as far as possible from the runway now you have to take off from it you can be wise and get some wings or yolo it and find an alternative you do you i, I really want to find out what that's about should we should we do i think we're going to do the orbit first i think we're going to do the orbit first and then, then we'll figure out how to follow a set of waypoints as a plane i'm sure that oh this is a completely automation based playthrough by the way there's there's an autopilot great news no no i don't i don't want to do that if we, if we look over here bam this this hey i got an achievement for saying no i don't want the 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 tutorial okay that that's cool uh that there, there is this scratch like interface for the programming of an autopilot uh this is not the craft that we want though let's uh let's load a craft we've got the craft staging up this is the craft that we've been using let's scroll out a little bit here uh to achieve all of our distance height and speed milestones and i believe that all those things, distance, height, and speed, are what we need to get into orbit. So we'll be using this with its gargantuan autopilot routine. Uh, we've got a countdown. I mean, the countdown does what you expect the countdown to do. Uh, and then all the way to here, we're just kind of, this is the gravity turn be, being taken out until we get to apoapsis. So so this just flies us up until we get our apoapsis up at um, uh, uh, 100 kilometers here. The apoapsis, of course, being the highest point of your orbit or the furthest away from the focus of an ellipse, uh, however you want to say that. Uh, then we turn our throttle off and then when we are out of the atmosphere we wait until we're back in the atmosphere uh, and if we're going too fast we slow ourselves down. That's it, it's a very simple script but it's not the script we need to be able to get to orbit. Something needs to happen here. And I think we'd probably do well to put a bunch of comments in here as well. We, we've, got, we've got comments here uh, so let, let's start with this with like start gravity turn right it's, it's not is it really i'm gonna go with pitch maneuver that's that's a bit better okay start pitch maneuver uh here i think we want to say we're out of atmosphere Try, trying to keep this nice and well thought out is really gonna be uh it's gonna be an important part of the process here just just so that we can actually know what's going on i might even need to write a little comment chain down the side to just say what it is we're even doing in our flight here because of course we we want to we want to take off we want to start our pitch maneuver we want to get our apoapsis to 100 kilometers then when we're at the top of our orbit we want to burn sideways until our periapsis on the other side of the planet rises up so that's the next bit we need to do in here we're still looking prograde i don't know whether that's what i want i think i want to steal these two again we're gonna look at the horizon and then when our vertical speed so so hear me out with this hear me out we're traveling up in our orbit and the way that we know whether we're close to apoapsis or not is our vertical speed will slow down because when we're at the highest point of our orbit we're going to start going down again so the, the 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 speed has to change from up to down okay so we wait for the apoapsis by waiting for our vertical velocity to drop below 50 or whilst with now is still bigger than 50 uh we print out our vertical velocity with a little bit of text just to let us know what's going on so then when we're there we want to throw our throttle back up to full bam so whilst we're burning our fuel we're waiting until our periapsis put that in there uh goes above the 80 kilometers that we're waiting for i'm just going to throw an extra 100 in there just to make sure that we we are above the right height uh, and then when we do that we set our throttle down to zero uh, we then need some coming home logic and that's the bit that i'm not entirely certain about okay i've gone through and slammed down some more once we've circularized here obviously we need to uh, to cut our throw well we turn on our throttle because we're looking at apoapsis when we oh i've joined something here that didn't mean to 
<clears throat> well, and then when our periapsis is over 80,000 kilometers, we have achieved everything we need to achieve with the throttle turns off. Orbit achieved. Beautiful. Uh, we wait 60 seconds just to make sure that we get over the hump of the apoapsis that may or may not be in front of us. This might be a failure point in in the, the program right here. We, we might need to put a more a more active check here but then hopefully when we're past the apoapsis our speed will then be going downwards so when our whilst our vertical velocity is less than zero we'll print that out when it then becomes not less than zero we're on the other side of the planet we turn around we turn on our throttle and we wait for our periapsis to come down below 50 uh 50 kilometers that's nicely in the atmosphere we turn the out we turn the engine off and i've got to stop using the right click we turn the engine off uh, and then wait until we enter the atmosphere whereupon we turn and look retrograde turn our throttle on make sure that we're going slow enough to re-enter and then everything's nice and calm and over here our parachutes have been set have, have been triggered by our fuel costs i think this should be fine we are definitely to achieve this mission gonna need an extra stage in the middle here Okay, we've got a slight staging warning here. We don't actually have enough stages, but I think by the time we're up to the point where we're using this engine, we can just get away with using our parachutes here. There could very well, let's save this craft and call it the staging up. There could very well be a tech tree item that will help us out here, but I just kind of want to fly like this. Oh, we're just a little bit too tall. We're 1.9 meters too tall. Okay, I shrunk the interstages down. I shrunk this middle stage down just a little bit. Okay, let's save that again. Hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to upgrade our launch pad and be able to go taller than 10, 10 meters. This is the tallest we can be. I wonder how much wider we can go with this launch pad. The vessel count is down on the second try for orbit here. The second try because the first one failed in a rather unspectacular way. When we've got ourselves out of the atmosphere and up to apoapsis, we had unfortunately locked our heading onto prograde. I had not turned that off before I started trying to change the uh, the pitch and heading. And of course, this is all done by an AI, so it's just fighting against two different programs. It couldn't figure, well, it did figure out what to do. It was locked onto prograde and it just flew itself into the atmosphere quite hard. This was the block here, that was the offending item. When we get out of the atmosphere, I have come along and put a new lock heading onto none there. And that should really help us out. And another change, I have loosened the requirements for the vertical velocity, just so we start firing the engine a little bit sooner, because that was definitely something that I noticed was a problem. In the background, the rocket has been flying on the staging up. We are indeed at the point of staging the little process that ticks over all on its own being shown in the flight log there. Staging fuel level. Once this gets down to a zero, we would be ma making the stage. Wait, we wait five seconds to make sure the two stages can separate very, very nicely. And we get a little zoom in to a look on the situation here. The, uh, the, the backstage disappeared from view very, very quickly there. We are burning up to a slow slightly higher apoapsis than we have done beforehand. My previous test flight showed me that 100 kilometers, whilst I'm sure achievable in, in some future technology, with the stack that we have right now, we cannot do it. So I aim for 150, apoaps 150 kilometers at my apoapsis so that we've got a little bit more hang time to perform the circularization burn where we need to be able to burn sideways fast enough to bring our periapsis up above the atmosphere on the other side of the planet this burn took a lot longer than i thought it was going to be i was like okay well we put our apoapsis at 100 kilometers before surely putting it at 150 wouldn't take too much longer it got to the point where i was like is this actually going to stop burning at any point have we have i made a serious programming error and we got stuck in a in a false loop thankfully not thankfully that it did turn off and we just started tumbling because, of course, we did. We don't have any gyroscopic stabilization on this craft. We weren't spinning for safety, so we are now tumbling for fun. And whilst we have this little bit of tumble, the AI is watching our vertical velocity. Of course, we're using the logic that at the apoapsis, our vertical velocity will be zero as we transition from up to down. Uh, so when we get to uh, 350, the AI kicks in, uses the liquid gimbling engine to point itself in the horizon wood distance. Uh, and I really did have to do a liquid engine here. The solid engine would not 
have had the gimbal capabilities to be able to point us in the right direction. Maybe at some point in the future we will unlock a gyroscopic stabilization process or RCS or, you know, there's a whole bunch of ways we can actually keep ourselves pointed in one direction. Maybe I will start thinking a little bit about spin stabilization. That's something that we can do in software. We might need two engines to provide the torque around the center of axis, but uh, for the moment, I needed to use the gimbling engine on the, the liquid core there. The fuel is burning down pretty fast. We're already under 10% of the fuel. This stage turns out was very, very important but felt like it was over in a heartbeat. It burnt through its fuel so incredibly quickly, but it got us up to the velocities we needed for this top stage to be able to like just send it all the way up to a circular orbit. And I'm not really sure what speed it is we need to get. In other games, I know it's about two and a half thousand meters per second. I'm thinking this one must be at least three, maybe four. Let's wait and see as we accelerate sideways. Our fuel is starting to get scary, scary very low but there we go we have achieved orbit about three and a half kilometers per second but that we have achieved the contract that was laid out before us but that is not everything that this mission was designed to do we have a little bit of a return function that we want to see if it uh, performs the way we want it to of course there are some issues mostly to do with the amount of fuel but once again we're watching our vertical velocity this time on the inverse it's going down when it starts coming back up again surely we've gone past our periapsis at this point and that's the place where i want to slow down because i'm on the other side of the planet not because it's the most efficient point it is no it is by actually probably the least efficient point i could try and slow down which was unfortunate for the fact that we don't have that much fuel we failed to lower our orbit into the atmosphere and thus we are forced to abandon this craft in orbit. Okay, the staging up has done wonders. If this is the maximum height we're allowed to use, I think the only way we can actually improve this is start bolting some parallel tanks but we don't need the staging up now. We are looking for new and interesting challenges. And of course, we're going to be using the one small jump to do so. This is the one with the wings. Okay, interesting. That's good because I want to go like a bird. I'm going to accept this and we, of course, are not going to do the tutorial because why Why would I ever? We've got to launch a new craft, launch from the runway, go through all checkpoints in under 20 seconds. The track distance is 387. Now, I know nothing about what we're about to see. Let's go to the build. Okay, one small jump. We we could probably just from this get some missions done. If we go if we go back to save to craft, uh, we can, we can do both a recon and fast roller. Can we can we go faster than twenty seven? I, I think we can go faster than twenty seven meters per second for long enough. Uh, the the trick will be not taking off, of course. We we do that just like this. Okay, that's that's simple enough. And then we get to see what's going on. Wait, did I actually take that? I, I know I know what I'm like. I will quite easily not accept a contract. I'll look at it. I'll go, yes, of course, and, and then think I'm done. Okay, it tells me I've got a problem. I go to launch from the runway, and it's like, oh, you, you've already got one. You've already got one craft, sorry, and you can only take it from the resumed flight view. I didn't even know there was a, resu a resumed flight view. Uh, how do I remove all debris? Oh, that, that's interesting. I'm not seeing much debris here. Uh, this is not the craft. This is the craft. This is what we have in orbit right now. We can't bring it back. It's got no fuel. Uh, I, w I was going to try. Oh, look at that eccentricity. That's pretty good. The closer to zero, the more circular, of course. Uh, uh, is this is this the remove? I, we're gonna do it. This craft cannot be covered because it's not on the ground. Would you like to destroy destroy the craft? Oh, it hurts, but that's that's sometimes what we need to do. Where is the resume button? Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, re recon and do a mission. It's simple as that. We might need to have turned the torque up a little bit on the on the first bit, but that's fine. Are we are we rolling? Oh, it's. It's very slow, but we are rolling. Okay, that's fine. Uh, village runway edge. Where, where do we... Targeting the runway's edge. Okay. Do, oh, I don't have to push the button to target every time. That would be pretty poor. Also, are we, are we going? Let's speed up. Okay, if we look in this dialog box here, we can see our surface velocity right there. We're trying to go faster than... Um, are we, are we going faster yet? We're not going faster yet. We've, we've been grounded for the amount of time. 27.8 meters per second. Pretty fast, actually. We are not going to make it. 
And there's the second checkpoint. I don't know how to do that. I don't... We'll, we'll see what the plane can do. Oh, we, we, that too fast. Okay, so you have let... Yeah, okay, th this is bad. This is bad. Let's go back and restart. We couldn't even do the first one. Hmm... This begins a long series of experimentations. I take the one small jump and stick a solid rocket motor on the back of it. This falls a little bit short of the target. It just really didn't have the oomph that it needed to be able to give itself enough lift to get itself over there. Uh, we go to the tech tree. We buy ourselves a few things. Most importantly, the electric motor. To see if we can get ourselves a, a, an RC motor on the play here. Scaling it right up to get the maximum lift possible out of it. We stick it on the front of the one small jump and uh, once again it just doesn't really have what it takes to get going. So I think maybe, maybe the way forwards is to scale down the plane as we can't scale up the engine anymore. This one nosedives off the end of the runway, but does something that the others haven't so far, actually enters a controllable flight system. This was probably the worst thing that could have happened to me, because this gave me hope. This made me think that maybe the small RC control plane is the way forward. So after many iterations, we have big delta wings, small darts, we have rocket propelled just to see if we can get going a little bit faster off the end. Uh, I would like to present to you this, my favourite, not the best, but my favourite demonstration demonstration of the RC concept. Uh, as you can see, it is all over the place. And this was something that I just had big problems with. So there's such a tiny, tiny crowd. The smallest bump would send it in any direction. Nothing could recover this. Even trying to try it on manual control was horrific. Before we get to the actual solution for this mission, I would like to take this moment right here and thank the sponsors for these flights. That's right, my patrons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you will see a list of names. A list of names of the guys and girls who have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation in appreciation for all that we do here. It takes significant hours and effort to get these videos out and it is only with the support of these very good people here that we can get this done. I think every single viewer out there should join me in saying thank you. Thank you so much. It was at this point that I gave up hope on the whole small RC plane thing. Everything just kept on getting knocking around. So I ended up building this cylinder with wheel situation. It got up to an amazing speed, 35 meters per second, something like that, before it hit the floor. Uh, then I added some wings, added some winglets, and added a program onto this and let it go to go and do the mission. Our flight program here isn't an overly complex one, but one that gets the job done. You can see at the very top we've got the start block, and we wait three seconds just so that I can get the flight logs open and make sure everything is running as well as I would like to. At this point I'd like to set my heading and pitch to a certain value, but given that the runway is at a weird angle, all I do is lock my current heading onto my, the way that I'm facing, and then let it go. When my vertical velocity says we are travelling downwards, I fire off a rocket quickly and throw it away as fast as I can, just to give us enough of a speed boost to get us up and off the end of the ramp, uh, where of course we hit the first checkpoint. Second checkpoint, very easily achieved, but not because of the things that I did in the, in the program here. Uh, this last lock heading onto vector nav target position, plus this other weird thing on the end. Ignore that weird thing on the end. I found a much better way of doing it. This was just trying to point in a certain direction in the planet's coordinates and it turns out it only worked by random chance. <laughs> Since I did this flight, I have read many forum posts, seen many pictures that explain what's going on. In fact, this one that I've just thrown up on the screen shows you what I tried to achieve. I was putting 100 into the Z direction. It worked mainly because I just happened to be in the right place at the right planet on the right time. It, it, was, it was weird. It shouldn't have worked, and it really did. Uh, I've got a much better, nicer way of doing it now. This thing here, uh, my, my position vector points from the center of the planet to me, and if I get the normal of that, it gives me a... a, a thing pointed in that direction with with length one that goes upwards from me because it's pointed at me from from the center of the planet i am up from the center of the planet uh so that's the way we'll be doing that in the future but with that i am gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen i will see you guys next time where well, i really hope we're headed for another planet but we'll see what the contracts say and i will see you then when we're gonna do that bye